James Robinson has named this his favourite club of the year so far. But from this brand, we don't think about fairway woods. We don't think about driver because they're not always the longest. They're not always the best. They're not always the one most seen on tour. And they're not always the most expensive. So they're often overlooked. But for me, this is an area of their brand that they have really started to improve in the last couple of the years. And we're starting to get them catching up with your TaylorMades, with your PHGs, with your Callaways, with your Pings. And being one that you need to consider and for me it's the fairway wood we're talking about today and it is the mizuno st max so the 230 range here we've got a three wood set at 15 degrees and this is a perfect hole for it the ninth hole here at waterfront as you will see is a dog leg to the right playing 435 yards and it is stroke index six from the white tees but one thing we can see is that we can run out of fairway if we do get our driver starting a little bit too far left. So this could be a club that we would go to. This could be the answer. And for me, I've tried the Cobra Dark Speed LS three woods so far this year, and it was fantastic. I have to say that it looked great. It was fantastic. But for me, it went a little bit too far. And will this one go too far as well? Will this be too close to my driver? That's what we want to see, and that's what you want to know. Would you put this club in your bag, or for a lot of golfers, are you hitting it just as far as your driver? And that's an interesting one there. A missed strike there, low on the face, but that has turned around the corner nicely, and I nearly missed that. Felt solid. It'll be very interesting there to see if we get the forgiveness. And after all, this is the max version, so this is the most forgiving they have got there. Again, behind the golf ball doesn't look too big. It's not one of those that looks huge. And if we look at that there, we can see that we do have the Mizuno sign in the middle of the face to help us get the ball in the middle. We do have that carbon, and I do like that blue accent at the back, just to show that it's not the biggest head. It's not something that looks absolutely huge. It doesn't then put you off. And if you get this out on the tee, people are instantly thinking, or he's a high handicapper. We all know that people have that fear of having clubs because they are going to get labelled into a category. But a miss hit there, turning the corner will be interesting. What else can we do? Now that is a fantastic high towering flight. A draw that should hold in the fairway there and leave me a great shot in. But that's a prime example on this hole of if that was driver, that would be in the trees, that would be gone. But that right there could put me in position A. And that's the thing you need to think about. This top end of your bag this year is extremely important. If you're struggling with a driver or you're happy with your driver, what is next? What is in your bag next to be able to get you some confidence, to be able to maybe hit off some tees? You might need it into some par threes, but you might also need it into some long par fours. So what are you comfortable with off the tee as well as off the fairway? But we're gonna get this inside and test this for numbers before we have a play around with those settings because if it is going too far what can i change this fairway wood to to be able to get a number that i like because when you go for a fitting you need to be asking right i need to fill this gap my driver goes 220 yards i need a club that goes 190 to 200. is that a three wood is that a five wood or is it even maybe a four wood that fits in right between but so far this max looks fantastic feels fantastic how's that off-centered hit done and that miss hit has done fantastic. It has caught the fairway. As you'll see by the tracer, it wasn't the best of shots, but that has left me 180 yards in here. It's done the job from a miss hit. The well struck one is just up there. I'm gonna collect it, it's just short of those trees. So there, yes, a little bit of a pull, but it would have been lost if it was driver. It would have been well over those trees. But let's jump inside. So let's get some numbers, but let's talk a little bit of technology. So we know we've got the carbon weave on the top. We know we've got the Cortex chamber. We've got the adjustable weight at the back of this drive. And again, on the sleeve, we can get it a little bit higher lofted, a little bit lower lofted. We can also make it a little bit more upright. So interesting there, but what numbers are we getting at 15 degrees? away there a high launch in one spun up there 5000 spin what have we got there straight away club head speed 103 pretty good carry 225 going to 35 so a little bit shorter 
than what I would expect. So I don't know why I've just knocked that ball off and got this one back, but a little bit shorter than what I'd expect, but that's a little bit of high one, but obviously that's still down that fairway or here on the golf zone, it's down in the landing zone. That's a better ball flight, better strike there. Just down the left side, what have we got again? 240 going 250, 103 club head speed, three and a half thousand spin. They're the numbers I would expect to see there. Again, the club head speed a little bit down for me, but I'm happy with those numbers there. Let's go again. Right, there's a missed strike. Right? There's a toey one. Let's see what that does to the numbers. 225, so it's dropped down 240. So from a missed strike there, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. That's done exactly what you would expect. Obviously, it's not lost massive amounts because of the technology there. Club edge speed down at 100. Let's see if we can get the club edge speed back where it normally is. Much better swing there. Much better ball flight as a result. Let's see for that one. 265 carry going 287, nearly 290. So straight away there for me, when I finally get a good swing on there, again, back up at 108 miles an hour, we've jumped that ball speed up to 159, spin rate down at 2000. This can be a little bit of a rocket, obviously there straight away, that has jumped up massively. So very interesting there for me. Let's go one more. And a better swing there. That felt a little bit off the bottom. Let's see if we've lost much. Yeah, 260 carry going 279.2 to be precise. So as good as 280. So two and a half thousand spin, 107 club edge speed. Just a little bit off the bottom. So didn't lose much there for a bit of a bottom strike and didn't spin up. Right, that really felt well struck that was out of the middle there let's see 260 going 277 nice shot so 108 club head speed there 3000 spin pretty solid strike there so interesting for me there that obviously average is probably with a good swing and out of the middle at a normal club head speed that's going around about 280 which for me is too close to the driver how many shots am i going to have at 280 or landing 260 it wouldn't be much and then to try and manipulate it it might not be great but let's add a little bit of loft here let's try and get this closer to a forward and let's see if it would fill somewhere in my bag again feels fantastic sounds fantastic performed pretty well outside for miss centered hits and we've seen that again in here that yes if i'm swinging a little bit slow and i miss hit it it's not losing much distance whatsoever so just performing like they have been with Mizuno. They've really made massive strides with it. They're getting more forgiveness. The distance wise right there, you can see it's up there with other fairway woods that I've hit, including the Cobra Dark Speed LS, which is more the low spin model. Here we have the ST Max. So very, very interesting. Okay, so we've now gone up one degree in loft. So we're now up at 16 degrees. So is that gonna make a massive difference? Is that going to fit a better gap for me? Straight away changing the loft. And this is what I would make sure when you go for a fitting is have a look at it with the adjusted loft. Cause straight away for me, now I've changed that angle. It wants to sit a little bit close. I've only gone one degree higher, but straight away that's sitting extremely close to me and I'm now going to probably try and come well try and manipulate that that's what I have done I have tried to manipulate it I've lost it out to the right there that's a poor swing distance wise 232 going 245 so a good number there for me I'm not saying that that's the number but obviously dispersion straight away there from changing that club is that now wants to sit that close down behind the golf ball and that's something that would put me off because trying to find square i'm now feeling like i'm opening my grip and then that's the other shot i would hit for me 
I've not really ever messed around with the numbers. I try and get the number on the club that I want to do. For me, this club at 15 degrees is a fantastic club. You know you can take it down to 13. You can put it up to 17. But make sure when you go for a fitting, you try and get it set exactly where you want. For me, it starts to make the face open or close a little bit. That's certainly thrown my dispersion off. But looks-wise, performance-wise, sound-wise, this is right up there. It's an ST Max version but it looks fantastic behind the ball and would fill you with confidence. And we know now with Mizuno, they're certainly getting the numbers you would like to see. For me there, that's going as long as any other brand, and it's certainly coming in cheaper if we have a quick look at those prices.